And here I am in the great outdoors of the Icelandic landscape. Searching for the hidden people. I'm Sam and I've been challenged by my good friend Chantelle to find the legendary Icelandic hidden people. Join me as I search the mythical landscape of Iceland to discover whether they are a touristic story or a heartfelt belief passed down by generations. So come with me whilst I battle the elements on this very tiresome journey in search of Holderfolk, the hidden people. Do you know anything about the Holderfolk? About the... Uh... Holderfolk, the hidden people? No, no. No? Excuse me, do you know anything about the Holderfolk? What? The hidden people. Holderfolk. Am I saying it right? Yeah. How do you say it? Well, we're, we're not Icelandic. Oh, where are you from? Uh, I'm from uh, the States. Can I ask you about the Holderfolk? Do you know about them? No. The hidden people? I've only been here for a couple hours, I haven't seen them yet. <laughs> okay, but have you heard of them? No, I've not. Hide in the rocks. Hidden people? Yeah. <laughs> Wow. I think that's a no. They're a big part of the Icelandic culture. Like in my class, we learned about them a lot. Do you think I will see an elf in Iceland? No. Why not? You're going to see a lot of strange people, but not elves. Strange people who believe in elves. Yeah. It seemed to me that Reykjavik Center was maybe a better spot to find tourists than it was elf believers, and it might take me a bit of further venturing to find the answers I'm looking for. So I travelled outside of the city to visit the town of the elves and its resident expert, Sibba. So this town that I'm not going to try and pronounce the name of, actually I am going to try and pronounce the name of, Hafnafjunundu, is apparently sort of a hub for elves, so. Ready Sibba? Yes. Get going. Yep. Let's come this way. A long, long, long time ago, God the Almighty visited Adam and Eve and Eve was such a good mother, she wanted all her children to be clean and neat when God saw them. When God had arrived, some of the kids were still dirty. Okay. And Eve felt ashamed of her dirty children. Mm. So she decided to hide them. When God had visited, he said, do you have any more kids? No. Nope. But of course God knew and he said, what's hidden to me shall be hidden to humans and these children became invisible and started to live in rocks and hills. So they became the hidden people yeah. because of it, because yeah. of Eve. Yeah. Oh, yeah. a bit sad. Well, now I know where the hidden people came from and why they're hidden. But are they just the same as Christmas elves? Chantal's arranged for me to go to the elf school. Elves can be from five to eight centimeters, the smallest ones. That is flower elves. 8, 10, 12, 15, 20, forest elves, tree elves, and the biggest is house elves, 70 or 80 centimeters, the biggest ones. Then Icelanders have a very good speciality. They have the hidden people, which is totally human-sized, human-looking, human body and human everything. Let's come down here so we can get to the cave. Is the cave quite well known? Yes. Famous cave. We're not going inside the cave, are we, Sibba? For me? We're not going inside the cave, are if we? We can, if you want to. Okay. There was a girl from Spain that was on my tour a couple of years ago. And she really wanted to see the elf, so she decided to crawl in there. Before too long, she shouted that she was seeing eyes. Really? Yeah. She came back out and she was quite shaken, so I knew she had seen something. Yeah. So we're all just staring at the cave when a cat comes wiggling out. <laughs> Very happy with all the attention. So that was no elf. <laughs> no elf. <laughs> Sibba's stories were great to listen to, but I feel I haven't really got many facts about the Holder folk and why Icelanders are so captivated by them. Which is what led me to Terry Gunnell, a professor of folklore at the University of Iceland. Well, in, in, in the case of the Holder folk, you've got, um, first of all, legends. So they'll come up in... in and stories about the the hidden people, which go right back to the Viking times. So we'll look at we'll look at the development of the stories. We'll look at the development of the beliefs. It's not as if they see little 
people hopping around rocks in ballet tutus with pointy <laughs> ears shooting arrows at people. Um, the, for them, it's, it's, there's a sense of, uh, of the landscape being very alive. And, and if, you, if you go and stand in a hot spring area, uh, like Gaysit, for example, you, the land speaks to you. It's alive. So many years ago, a lady called Margaret was here. She heard a child cry and she thought to herself, oh, some kid has wandered away from home and is lost in the park. She started looking for the child, but she couldn't see anybody. So she started listening more carefully. Where is this crying coming from? She came to this rock and she heard the crying was coming from inside the rock. Wow. While she was standing here, she also heard somebody was going, trying to soothe the child. Oh. And after a while, the crying did stop. And Margaret went home and told her friends and family what she had experienced. She was absolutely certain that it was an elf child that had cried. Really? I think I would find that a bit scary if I heard that in the rock. Was she frightened or was she? No. She thought it was just a great experience. I'm sure mm. many of her friends said, I wish it was me it had happened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, great. Yeah. How do they fit in the rocks if they're human-sized? That's a good question. There are so many things unanswered in this case that we can't answer. We simply don't know. Our knowledge of human mankind hasn't come to that. This just occurs. They live in rocks. And you mentioned the different types of elves. So there's 14 types of elves, four times of no. But I don't understand, how, how do you know if you haven't seen them? How can you tell the differences? You d get the witnesses to describe them. Size, okay. clothes, colour, what sort of shape had their body. And you, you find very soon who, what of the type it, they're describing. Okay. There are illustrations of elves. Here is the real elves and here is hidden people. And then we gnomes, fairies, dwarves, mountain spirits, and trolls, and a variety of others. Icelanders call all these flora elves. Mm -hmm. But they just normally meet mean hidden people and elves. These beliefs, for them, it's, to my mind, it's more of a sort of personification of a landscape. Um, and something that you need to show respect for when it comes down to it. Okay. So this is really, what, for them, what's going on. Uh, they've all grown up with the stories like this, their parents have talked about in the rocks, so maybe let's look out for the hidden people. Mm -hmm. it's, a nice, it's a nice belief, um, like Santa Claus. Terry suggested I go to a coffee shop to meet an old friend of his, Briani, who had quite a story to tell. Sadly though, he didn't have his own car. So... He's in the back here. We're going to go and find some um, rocks or maybe churches in the village. And apparently this gentleman over here has had some sightings. He's actually seen them. So hopefully we can do a bit of translating and figure out what he's seen. Boyart told us about when he was a little boy and how there was a moss-covered rock outside his house. As a child, he used to pull the moss off of the rock. However, when his stepfather found out, he scolded him and told him that the elves would be angry. Boyark was very upset that he hadn't meant to do any harm. Then one night, in a dream, the elf princess came to him dressed in blue with a gold belt on her waist and gave him her forgiveness. He said that since then, the elves have watched over him like guardians. It was a great story and Boyark got pretty emotional about it. The only thing is, I don't know how much of that was to do with the Coca-Cola he was drinking. Uh, elves and hidden people have been part of the Icelandic culture for these 12 centuries since the Vikings came here from Norway. The figures to do with elf belief uh, or, or Hildefolk belief are basically, it's not 50% believe and 50% don't. It's nothing like as clear as that. Maybe 5% say they believe. That they believe certainly? It's certainly. Okay. Maybe, and then 10%, only 10% will say they don't believe. Uh, and you have everybody else in the middle right. somewhere who are open to the idea that something might be there. If you ask, why do you believe in elves? Many, or most of the answers is something like this. Because my grandma told me when she was young, she met elf kids and they played together. They were good friends. 
because my mother, father, uncle, niece, nephew, good friend, somebody that I fully trust have had a personal experience of them. That's why I believe these stories are true. I'd say probably in general more women tend to be open to beliefs of this kind, uh, more people who are less educated and more people in the countryside. Otherwise, there's no huge difference between country and city either. There's no hu huge difference between the older people and the younger, okay. or, or educated people and not. What do you think about people sort of making money out of the, the elf industry, like shops selling things? There isn't a whole lot. People complain often that there's not enough souvenirs about really? the elves. They yes. actually want, want to see more. Yes, but we don't import any cheap souvenirs about the elves from China. Or, no. no. So it's not really, you, you don't think it's too commercialised? No. Thank you for walking with me. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I've enjoyed my tour. Just got a tweet from Chantelle. You're off to explore Iceland, get out the city. And that I can do. Terry said that his research had shown that it was the countryside where most of the believers were. So hopefully my out of city excursion will allow me to meet some more real believers of the hidden people. So I've just walked past this house and seen there's a big rock here with all these chalk drawn drawings of elves and windows and doors. I'm going to hop inside and see if anyone can tell me a bit more about it. Hi! <laughs> I've seen a, your rock out there with the drawings. Why are there drawings on the rock? Get on one For the fairies? Yeah, of course. Is that the same as the Holder folk? No. No. Not really. And you believe in Holder folk? Uh, yes, I have to. You have to? Because I have seen them. Because I have seen them. <laughs> Please tell me. I just understood Zilla was holding her hands and going. And they looked at him for, I don't know how many minutes or, <laughs> or how long time, but. Uh, and how did you know that they weren't just. I didn't know. Were you scared? No, because no? I wasn't sure, uh, uh, sure about it was uh, children from the list. Wow. In the 20th century, we have stories about the, the, even, even about them driving a cars. Yeah? Yeah, we have. Oh, really? So how would we know, how would we know there were elves and not humans? Yeah, that's, that's the question. Oh, I see. So they could just be amongst uh, us. Yeah, yeah. Therefore, therefore I'm, um, but when people say, oh, there's elves, it's just a nonsense. No one sees elves today. But how could we know? You go every day to a supermarket, you meet the thousands of people. Yeah. You know nothing about them. It's Maybe true. half of them are elves. <laughs> and according to records, there are only 300,000 people in Iceland. 320,000, something like that. Yeah. But our consuming is like we were one million. Okay. So, so where's that can't the explanation. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. When you do look around and you see that this natural world right on top of you, all the lights, all the earthquakes, everything, it, it is extreme, but then, I don't know, it is all quite extreme here, so it kind of fits. It makes me feel like the belief here is quite pure, like it isn't there for tourists, it isn't there to brag about, boast about, it is, it's just genuine. You just would never meet someone in London, go up to them, do you believe else, and they'd say yes. There's, there's a nice quote by Billy Connolly that, that he doesn't um, believe in God, but he believes in the people who do. As long as we keep them close to our hearts and remember the stories, they are with us. Maybe we all just need a bit of magic. Maybe, maybe we just want that. And I think maybe he's right. I enjoyed more speaking to the people who do believe than don't. So why not? Like, it's quite fun. This is the truth as we know it. You decide whether you believe it or not.